What is going on you guys, Ness Mudkip here, back again for another video, and today we're doing a little bit of a guide thing, which I thought may, might be quite useful and pretty interesting. So you guys probably know that Viz Media is the biggest publisher of manga in English, so, you know, for America and the UK and stuff. But they publish their manga in a lot of different formats, um, you know, they've got like 3-in-1s, omnibuses, all stuff like that, and different sort of imprints, for example, like Shonen Jump Advance and stuff like that, um... And, you know, a lot of the time they don't really give clear explanations on what all this different stuff is. So basically I'm going to go through, like, a load of different kinds of manga that Viz do. And a couple of other publishers, actually. And basically try and clear up some stuff with that. And hopefully when you guys come to buy manga, you'll know what you're buying a little bit better than, you know, what Amazon says or whatever. So let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to start off here with a regular Shonen Jump Viz manga volume. So when everyone, someone says, like, manga volume, this is the first thing you're going to think of. This is just One Piece Volume 1. Uh, obviously, you can tell this was uh, in Shonen Jump because it's got the little SJ here and it says Shonen Jump manga down here. This is the most common thing. Um, basically, if a title has been serialized in Shonen Jump in Japan, the only publisher that's going to pick it up is Viz because Viz is owned by Shueisha who published Shonen Jump in Japan, so they have a little deal going on there. But yeah, as for these volumes, pretty standard. Uh, you know, you've got... How many chapters are in these? Um... Yeah, about eight chapters to a volume. If that's, you know, a Shonen Jump series, it's about 20 pages a chapter. Um, it's only in black and white, um, so yeah, no colour pages, but, you know, same with Japan, really. And generally, there's this little swirly design down here um, that tells you the volume count. This is generally older Viz series to do this, like One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, Yu-Gi-Oh!, stuff like that. Um, for example, if I take my Bakuman volume here, this is a newer version, it doesn't have the swirly thing down the bottom, it tries to mirror the Japanese cover art. So that's that's pretty nice, to be honest. They do that, like, generally when they pick up new series nowadays, but for like the older ongoing ones, like, you know, this, Bleach and Naruto, um, they'll have this sort of swirly design. So that's generally how you can tell that was published in Shonen Jump. Standard manga volume, so yeah, there you go. Okay, next we have a very similar volume, but this is one that wasn't published in Shonen Jump. So for example, Formal Alchemist here, which was published in, like, monthly Shonen Gangan or something, I don't know, it's a Square Enix magazine. But it's basically the same deal, no colour pages, you know, um, stuff like that. The chapter count can vary because for, like, old manga like this... Not old manga? What am I talking about? Manga published in other magazines, for example, Formula Alchemist was monthly. So it had longer chapters, but there's only four chapters in this. But, you know, it's roughly the same thickness as a one-piece volume, a little bit thinner there. So, um, yeah, these are basically the same deal, but they don't have the Shonen Jump thing on the side. They have this little, like, V or, like, Viz action. They have a couple of different genres like that for... Um, different series that don't fall under Shonen Jump. So, yeah, these are basically the same thing. You know, pretty good paper quality. Okay paper quality, no color pages. It's about it, basically. Okay, so the next one I'm going to talk about is a imprint of Viz. Now, Viz imprints, there are a load of different ones, so we're going to talk about this one. Okay, right. To start off, actually, um, this one is just the Shonen Jump manga imprint. Now, if you look on the back, uh, the little age rating down here generally will say rated T for teen or E for everyone or something. A bit like the game ratings that you have in America. So yeah, they're generally aimed at like the 13 and above audience. Now, for some series that were put in Shonen Jump, um, when they're translated to English, um, you know, Viz feels that maybe uh, they're a bit too mature sort of themes to be aimed at that sort of crowd. So they do the Shonen Jump advanced line. And these are aimed at 16 and above. Um... They're basically exactly the same in terms of quality of manga and all that, you know, same amount of pages and all that. But you can tell the difference because they'll usually be published like this, with this, like, box thing in the middle. Um, and they'll say Shonen Jump Advanced up there on the side. And these are aimed for, like, 16 and above. So, some examples are Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Hunter x Hunter, uh, Gintama, Hitman Reborn. They're all Shonen Jump Advanced. Like, they have stuff in them that Viz don't want to aim at 13-year-olds. So, generally... If a new series gets announced and it's coming under the Shonen Jump Advance, that's pretty much a good thing because it means um, that the series is going to get over to us with less edits, which is pretty good, which is, you know, why it's good for JoJo to be like that. So, yeah, uh, Shonen Jump Advanced. There are a couple of other imprints that Viz do as well. For example, there is the Viz Kids line. I don't have any Viz Kids volumes, but um, stuff like Pokemon and Beyblade comes under that. And they're basically, um, like, titles more aimed at the younger crowd, so about the 10 to 12 crowd, I think. Um, you know, there's still some good titles in there, for example, Pokemon Adventures, so I really want to pick that up soon. Um, like, so generally these would be more edited than normal, but a lot of the time the manga they pick up doesn't really need to be edited anyway, because it's already aimed at kids, so yeah. Um, it's basically the same deal, like, on the spine on these things, it will say VK, like, Viz Kids or something up there. Um, so that's how you can tell those apart. 
pretty simple and yeah, that's some Viz Kids. Okay, the last imprint I'm going to talk about is the Shoujo Beat imprint. Uh, I don't have any of these, mainly because it's Shoujo series. Now, Shoujo is like aimed at, it's like the same age rating as Shonen, but it's aimed at girls. So you mean there's stuff like uh, around host high school club, wherever it is, you know, stuff like that. Shoujo series uh, come under the Shoujo Beat imprint. Volumes are exactly the same, but it's Shoujo stuff, so, you know. Okay, next I'm going to talk about the omnibuses that Viz put out. Now, there are two types of omnibuses that Viz put out, like, for most series. So, for most series. Number one, the good kind. Viz Bigs. Now, these are generally reserved for series that have already been completed. Not always, but it seems to be the recurring trend. Um, for example, you can get for Dragon Ball, you can get for Dragon Ball Z. They're the ones I have. You can get them for... Inuyasha. You can get them for... Uh, I can't think, but like, it seems to be mainly completed series, but for example, Vagabond is an ongoing one, but that's in Visbig format as well, so that's an example. <clears throat> so what's different about Visbigs? Well, basically they collect three or four volumes in one, sometimes two. I think it might just be Dragon Ball, which is kind of weird, but the really great thing about them is they're really nice and chunky like this. They have really sort of nice quality cover art. They have these little flaps, and they have really, really good quality paper, like way better than your general manga quality paper and also they will often have color pages like you can see there which is something really really nice about them downside is you don't generally get the original cover art which is something i do like to have when i have my manga so kind of a shame on that point but i think the advantage of these advantages of these outweigh the disadvantages um and like you know they the strong points are better than the strong points of a regular viz uh, volume so yeah, Visbigs are really, really nice. If you can find like a series you want to pick up in Visbig format, I'd recommend it most of the time. There might be some specifics. For example, the Dragon Ball ones are slightly more edited than their um you know regular volume counterparts, but I still think the advantage of these are, you know, worth it over those. Okay, the other type of omnibus is the Viz 3 and ones. Now I don't have any of these because they're awful. Stay away from them. I'm gonna put like pictures of them up here so you know what I'm talking about. Generally, they've been done for series like One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, Fullmetal Alchemist. They're doing them for Dragon Ball now, which is weird, because they've already got Vizbigs out for Dragon Ball. But yeah, they basically do the same thing as the Vizbig, Viz Big, which is stick three volumes in one. But they're basically the same size as one of these normal mangas, and the paper quality is atrocious. Like, it feels like newspaper. Like, like UK people, have you ever, like, you know fish and chips, and you get, like, paper wrapped in, that you wrap your fish and chips in? It's like that. It's really bad. So basically, um, although the price tag can be tempting, stay away from them. And especially for Dragon Ball, which somehow was a Viz Big and a 3 in 1 release, get these. Much, much better. Um, I should mention for Viz actually, the price tag is generally cheaper than buying all three volumes separately, so they're really good value for money. But the 3 in ones, stay away from them. Because they're just crappy, basically. So, yeah. Uh, well, alright, get the 3 in ones if it's your only option and you really, really are on a budget. But if you have any sort of, like way around it, I wouldn't recommend picking them up, so yeah. I should also mention that Viz sometimes does some weird kind of omnibus editions that are sort of one-off. For example, the Death Note Black edition here, it collects two volumes in one, and it has this sort of black uh, pay ed edge of pages, basically, which looks really nice. Um, weirdly, it does have a colour page, even though the paper quality feels basically like a normal manga. Um, this is really duffed up, actually, because this is the first manga volume I ever bought. Fun fact. Um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, they do this sometimes, I think this might just be because it's Shonen Jump Advanced, I'm not really sure, but, um, yeah, like, they do sort of one-off, um, like, omnibus editions, like, for example, they do one for Neon Genesis Evangelion, which has good, like, better paper quality than normal as well, but it's not really a Vizbig, so generally, if it's not a Vizbig, or if it's not a regular 3-in-1, you might want to check it out, because it could be better, it could be worse. For example, these Death Note ones do the job perfectly. They're slightly bigger than, you know, a regular volume. And, you know, you get them for cheaper. So, I, I really like these. But, yeah. There you go. Okay, next imprint to talk about is the Viz Signature imprint. Now, these are series that um, are basically, like, Seinen series. Or, like, basically series aimed at an older audience. Generally, the 18 and over crowd. Um, so, they're published under the Viz Signature line. Um, most of the time it has a little thing that will say SIG up there. I bought this when I was in Malta and it has a little flower on it for some reason. I still don't know what that means. If anyone knows, please tell me. But most of the time it will say SIG up in the corner. Um, so yeah, generally these are going to be completely unedited because they're aimed at like 18 Nova. And they actually have really good quality sort of covers and stuff. Like for example, this 20th Century Boys one is bigger than your average volume. 
Um, and if you open it up, it has these little cover flaps like the Visbig have. And the paper quality is a little bit better, I'd say, than your regular manga volume. So that's really nice. Um, and I don't think you can see there, it has that sort of like embossed cover, which is pretty cool. So, um, Viz signature titles, I mean, I don't know if 20th Century Boys is a one-off, but generally seem to be of very good quality. So, you know, if uh, something gets picked up by Viz Sig, that won't be anything in Shonen Jump. That'll just be maybe stuff in like Ultra Jump and like Seinen Manga, uh, like anthologies in Japan, get picked up by the Viz Sig line. And that's, you know, really awesome um, quality and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay, last ones we're going to talk about for Viz are the guidebooks that they put out and sometimes art books. So the first kind is the Shonen Jump Profiles um, thing. So obviously these are the Jump series and they will also have a little Shonen Jump Profile thing up there. These are generally little guidebooks and they vary in paper quality and stuff from guide to guide but this is a Death Note one for example. Entirely in black and white and yeah, it's just a guidebook really. I mean, they're basically the same price as regular manga volume but they'll say Shonen Jump profiles or they'll tell you some manga. Um, other thing is Art of Shonen Jump. For example, here's a Dragon Ball, Di Dragon Ball Daisenshi 1, also known as the Complete Illustrations, which is in full colour, really nice paper quality. Um, that was a bad thing to show full colour. There you go. Have to sell. Um, yeah, these are really, really nice. Um, and they do them for a couple of different series, like they do them for One Piece, One Piece Colour Walk, for example. Thing about these is, um, Viz's art books seem to go out of print quite a lot. For example, the first One Piece Color Walk, there's One Piece Color Walk 1 and 2 out in the US, and One Piece Color Walk 1 is completely out of print, and I cannot find it anywhere, which is a real shame because I want to pick it up. Similar thing, they did like the art form at Alchemist as well, which obviously isn't Shen Jump, but you know, it is another art book they do. The, there's two of those out, and the first one is also out of print, which is a real shame actually. So basically, if you see one of these getting released, um, pick it up because, I mean, I'm not sure how long Viz likes to keep them in print for, so that's my recommendation on those. Okay, with Viz out of the way, we're now going to move on to another publisher, which is Yen Press. Um, Yen Press pick up a variety of different titles. They have uh, popular stuff like Azumanga Dao, Yotsuba, um, Soul Eater, the manga I know they have. Um, they have a bunch of other stuff, you can check out the website for that. They're generally a pretty good publisher. Um, they will... Their translations are generally aimed at people who already know stuff about anime and manga. So, for example, honorifics and stuff be left in, maybe with a little translation note uh, once a uh, volume or something to tell people what it is. But, yeah, so let's have a look at their releases. So, they are a little bit weird when it comes to actually releasing volumes. For example, Yotsuba volumes like this and a couple of other, other things they do are basically exactly the same as these Viz Shonen Jump ones. Um, you know, exactly the same size, same paper quality, same cover quality, no colour pages, um, and, you know, stuff like that. Does the job really nice, but it's really weird because they only do it for some series. Uh, for example here, like, they, Watamote, or no matter how I look at, no matter how I look at it, as you guys thought are not popular, as they like to call it in English, is a very, very different, feels very different to, like, a regular manga volume. Um... For example, like the like the cover feels very different. It has some sort of like embossedness a little bit on it. It's a lot thinner than normal. Collects collects less chapters, and the pages pages feel about the same as a regular manga volume. So it's kind of weird like that. Um, and they also have other ways of publishing as well. For example, I believe um, like the bunny drop volumes are a lot bigger than regular manga volumes. So you know they publish things in a variety of different ways. They also do have a habit of doing really big omnibuses, right? So this is the Azimanga Dio omnibus. It's got all four volumes in one, which means it's really thick. But unlike the Viz 3 ones, these are actually generally pretty good paper quality. It feels like a regular manga volume, basically. And for a lot of Yen Press titles, these omnibuses are the only way to pick up the entire series. So, you know, it's pretty nice for the most part. These things do the job. And yeah, there you go. So that was Yen Press. Next publisher we're going to talk about is one who has gone under, and basically all their titles are now out of print, which is Tokyo Pop. Uh, you can recognise the Tokyo Pop volume easily because it will say Tokyo Pop in the corner there, and it have this red thing on the side. Um, but like I said, Tokyo Pop have gone under, and all their series are now out of print and getting rescued by other people, or not getting rescued, which is a real shame. For example, Dead Man Wonderland was one they had, which got picked up by Viz recently, and I will be picking that up once the Viz release comes out, which is very nice. Uh, here I have the Samurai Shampoo, which... Uh, manga volume, yeah. Samurai Champlain manga, which feels very, you know, similar to a regular manga volume. Um, and the pages inside are normal. I heard a lot of people complaining, actually, that Tokyo Pop will often censor series. So, if you see an old Tokyo Pop series that maybe came out in the mid 2000s and is now completely out of print and is censored, it's probably not worth hunting down. 
like I believe Initial D or something got licensed and it got censored or something, so everyone was a bit iffy about that. So you know, series like that, I'd wait for other people to like pick up, but a lot of the time people won't. For example, Welcome to the NHK is when I'd love to see someone pick up, but no one seems to be doing it, and I'd love to buy Welcome to the NHK the manga. But yeah, um, for short series like this, Samurai Champloo is only two volumes, for example. I mean, they it's pretty good. I mean, it's the best you're gonna get. Like Samurai Champloo, no one else is gonna probably bother picking this up. So, yeah, I mean, everything else, like the paper quality and stuff, is pretty standard. Uh, I believe this one... No, it was the first one, but the first one had a colour page in the front. So, you know, and they just, I guess they throw that randomly. Pretty standard, but, I mean, they're going to be hard to find these volumes, and if you do find them, yeah, okay, but just don't expect too much out of them. So, probably don't spend too much on them, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, the last publisher I'm going to talk about that I have an example for is Vertical. Vertical is the best publisher of English manga currently, in my opinion. Um, translations are absolutely fantastic, and they will release... Like, the volumes they actually release are very, very high quality. This is Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin Volume 1, and it's hardcover, which is really nice. Paper quality is the best paper quality I've ever felt mangas. Basically better than the Viz Bigs. Um, they also throw in colour pages, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right in the front here, for example. Um, yeah. And, I mean, to be fair, this is a sort of one-off, um, not all the manga is hardcover, but, like, even the stuff that isn't, like, the sort of standard releases, like Osama Tezuka's Blackjack, which I have, um, seen a few volumes of, is very nice, has much nice paper quality in a regular manga volume, the cover feels really quite sturdy and stuff. Um, they also do really, really nice cover designs for, um, the covers, like, they will they will often come up with original, their own original covers, but half the time I look at it and I think, you know, that's actually better than the Japanese version, so... They are very, very good with this vertical. I really, really like the stuff they put out, which is a shame because they don't really have many mainstream series and stuff, but when they do put out a volume like You're In For A Treat, it's uh, really nice. If, you're, if your favourite series gets picked up by vertical, you can be like, yes! So yeah, that's vertical. And there are a couple of other publishers which I don't have examples for, which I'm going to quickly talk about. Um, Dark Horse is one. Dark Horse is an American comic publisher who also publish a few manga. Now... They are a little bit iffy with this sort of stuff. I believe a lot of their titles have been picked up by people like Kodansha Comics now, who I'll go on to in a bit, but Dark Horse, if you find old releases, 99% of the time from where I've seen are going to be flipped, which means that all the artwork is flipped the other way so that mangas read, you know, the manga reads like an English book would. Um, I mean, you can come up with your own conclusion on how you feel about that. Personally, I, I hate it. I'll never pick up a flipped release of anything. Um, for example, actually, an, an example of that is Akira, which is... Uh, manga I was going to pick up, but it was flipped um, by Dark Horse, and then it was actually picked up by uh, Del Rey or someone on a different manga publisher, and it was kept flipped, which is a real shame because um, there's no way to own it like unflipped. So generally, I wouldn't support releases like that if I were you. Uh, yeah, another publisher is Kodansha Comics. Um, I believe they do Berserk, um, they do Attack on Titan, and they do a bunch of other series. A lot of people probably know pretty well. I think they do fairy tale. They might do fairy tale. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, from what I felt on those, pretty standard manga releases. Sometimes the covers feel a little bit sturdier than normal, which is pretty nice. And um, yeah, that's Kodansha really. I don't really have an example for it, but they're pretty standard from what I've seen. So that is most of the manga publishers. If you need any more information, guys, leave something down in the comments. Um, and yeah, I hope this helped you guys out when you're trying to buy manga volumes. So yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I might do one of these on anime releases, but I really don't have enough, I don't think, uh, different anime releases from different companies to show off the differences between stuff. So, um, I'm probably going to leave that for a while. But yeah, um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was useful, and I'll see you all later. Bye.